Welcome to the Low Carb USA podcast, where we seek to inspire you to help us build this community. I'm Doug Reynolds. And this is Pam Devine. So today we're really excited to have Jennifer Alpdyke with us. Um, we've just come out of a really great conference. She's a physician assistant who's joined us from Michigan again at this year's conference. And we just wanted her to tell a little bit of her story. We knew she was an innovative physician assistant. She's spent um, a good amount of time with us last year at the Forum for uh, Medical Practitioners talking about our standard of care initiative and everybody participated with feedback and input and also contributed to the launch of the clinical guidelines with the conversation and written input. So it was only as she joined us today and we got to know her better. Last night we had a beautiful reception dinner after the conference to end the Sunday. And she was telling me the story of what she's been doing over the last year and I wanted her to share. Not only that, but Jennifer, if you could just share with us briefly how you got into re recommending therapeutic carbohydrate reduction as a medical intervention to your patients and also a little bit about how you got into it personally and then share with us what you've been doing over the last year. It's been amazing. Thank you so much, Pam. So I first discovered low carb um, theory when I was in my first year of PA school about 17 years ago. I remember sitting in human physiology classes and they were talking about uh, diabetes and the food pyramid and it didn't make any sense. So when um, Dr. Atkins program showed up and um, I tried it, it was the first time in my whole life that I wasn't preoccupied with thoughts of food and even my first rotation in rural medicine, um, I started talking to the medical staff and patients about carbohydrate restriction. And from the get-go, people almost immediately feel better. And ever since, um, I've worked in lots of different specialties in medicine, and there's always been benefit in bringing in carbohydrate restriction. So that includes open heart, like cardiothoracic and vascular surgery, general surgery, gastroenterology, critical care, palliative care, because they take care of end of life and chronic pain. Yeah. And um, gosh, what else have I done? I've done um, internal medicine, urgent care, and all of this has led up to this innovative new approach to primary care called direct primary care. And so um, I discovered direct primary care. It was, it was such an amazing way this came into my life. Um, after working seven years in internal medicine, I had more and more people who were interested in the ketogenic diet in particular. And um, there just wasn't a structure in that group to allow me to have my own patient base. And so I was up north in Michigan doing a training for our critical incident stress management team. And I came home and I started going through the mail and there was a newsletter for the Michigan PA Association. And it literally fell off the table and opened to an article all about two other PAs in Milford, Michigan that had opened their own direct primary care practice. And I was flabbergasted because at first, I wondered, when did the rules change? I can have a private practice. And so um, we called them up and uh, did a site visit and they were thrilled to have us. And they said, you can, you can start this practice for about $10,000. All you need is your own electronic medical record system, malpractice coverage. And as a physician assistant in Michigan, um, I need a medical director, a physician who is partial owner of the practice and um, collaborative agent. So I was good friends with a physician named Dr. Marty Peters Farling, and we had worked together professionally and personally. And um, I sent her some videos from Dr. Josh Umber, who is part of Atlas MD out of Wichita, Kansas, and they are the pioneers of direct primary care. And she watched the videos and she says, yeah, and I want to do this too. And so wow. uh, we got our professional LLC for SWMI Health Matters, and I started seeing patients in February. And Dr. Marty has joined me in June. And what we're really building is 
a truly multidisciplinary holistic wellness center. Because presently we're in a building that houses a chiropractor, about 20 massage therapists. Um, we're partnered with Ashley Carter Youngblood, who is a psychotherapist and a fantastic um, ketogenic lifestyle coach herself. Uh, she's here with me today at this conference. And yeah, and I can't actually wait to interview her in a future podcast because she has an incredible story of healing. And these kind of stories really help other people to learn what the power of cutting carbohydrates and eating healthy fats and a healthy lifestyle really can do for somebody in, in areas where a lot of people don't realize it will help. Definitely, definitely. Um, we've partnered with two acupuncturists, um, a hypnotherapist, and two other um, counselors to assist with the emotional processing piece. The, the most exciting aspect of this project is that we're taking the best aspects of traditional medicine. So we're very much comfortable with prescribing antibiotics and talking to people about how important vaccines are, but um, we're incorporating this team of other health professionals so it's truly an integrative approach mm -hmm. so um, my skill set lies in um, emotional processing trauma recovery i teach meditation as as you well know i, I feel so grateful to have offered that for low carb usa now for two years um, but the caliber of healing that i see in my practice when not only do people employ these healing methods of nutrition using carbohydrate restriction, when they learn how to recognize the fight or flight response and how stress distorts reality, they start healing in every facet of their life. Mm -hmm. They recognize when they're in an unhealthy relationship, either personally or professionally, they start realizing that it's so important to be connected to work that fills them with a sense of purpose and lights them up. Yeah, and we can attribute that is it makes it less work, right? And it also makes you able to fill in the blanks of a healthy lifestyle outside of that and how you eat and how you feel. Yes, it's all connected. And this is where Dr. Marty and I and Atlas MD, the direct primary care movement is all about offering a solution for physicians and other healthcare practitioners that have been harmed by the traditional model. Physician and healthcare provider suicide is on the rise. Mm. And it's a reflection of the societal creation of this healthcare machine where most uh, traditional primary care providers are trying to take care of 1,500 to 3,000 patients per provider in five to seven minute increments. Mm. Even most annual physicals aren't being given more than 15 minutes. And that's wow. just not enough time. It isn't. So when you do direct primary care, we don't bill insurance, but we try to keep our costs low. So it's not the same thing as concierge medicine. So for an adult, the first visit, um, it has an enrollment fee, which is typically about $200. Children are usually about $100. Mm -hmm. Uh, that covers the first 30 days. And it doesn't matter if you come in to see us once or a hundred times, there's never any copay. Mm. So subsequent months are based on the age of the individual, how many members live in the household, and what kind of package is best for you or your family. Um, we offer um, 18 to 62 year olds or $69 a month. And then if I have someone who wants intensive emotional processing where they're guaranteed an hour visit with me for uh, neuroemotional technique, I rest yoga nidra, stress management, or intensive ketogenic coaching, then that's $99 a month. So we don't offer any contracts, so people tend to see us more intensively on the front end or during times of significant life transition, mm -hmm. um, but we can adjust things as we go. Average office visits are 30 to 60 minutes, um, mm -hmm. but if it's something simple, sometimes you're in and out. Uh, and the more we know you, your family, your history, we can more safely use things like email, texting, Skyping um, for those quick questions, but you have direct access to your healthcare provider. That's such an innovation and so outside of the box um, that we've been in with standard medical care. 
And you also highlight something that we'll be talking to Dr. Gary Fetke about. He's become very passionate about helping the physician who doesn't feel like they have a lot of hope in the system. Suicide and um, you know fear of not doing the right thing, but not having the right tools and not being effective. So we'll talk to him again in the future. But I really appreciate you sharing this with, um, with our audience and our followers, our medical practitioners, and tell them a little bit more about how they could find more information, how about how they could possibly think about incorporating this kind of practice or starting something like that. Where would they find tools and resources for that kind of information? Definitely. Um, anyone who's interested can reach out to us at SWMI Health Matters. Our website is www.integratedhealthmatters.com. And then, like I said, the pioneers in this industry are the Atlas MD mm -hmm. out of Wichita, Kansas. Excellent. Um, I think it's a really valuable place for people to start to think out of the box to create a new medical practice for treating patients effectively and to help them really heal and have a better quality of life, which is why you've gone into practice to begin with, right? Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us today. And to keep our word about keeping our short and simple, and we'll provide more resources if anybody wants to look into the information that we talked about today further um, in the show notes and um, through our YouTube channel notes. Thank you very much for joining us. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. Awesome. 15 minutes? Really, really good. So you'll notice that we haven't had any commercials at all during this podcast, and we, we intend to keep it like that if we possibly can. But at the same time, the, the work that we're doing and the efforts that we're going to to get the clinical guidelines done, uh, there's just so much to do. And in order to really, for this to be sustainable, um, we need your help. And so um, what we're asking you to do is go and take a look at our, at our Patreon account. It, it, there's actually quite a few options there. There's, it, it provides you with options to actually go onto our site and there's membership options there where you can um, get access to all our video content and, and other, other perks of being a member um, or even just, you know, a, a dollar a month, become, become a patron. And you can find that in, in um, patreon.com slash lowcarbusa. I'll put it in the show notes and in the episode notes so that you can find it. And um, yeah, help, help us to, to change the world. Yeah, so I think a lot of people take a look at the, um, the conference registrations and I think they immediately assume that, you know, from a distance that these might be money-making endeavors that we're doing with these conferences. And you know, it's hard to admit and it's hard to tell people that we really aren't making any money from these. Um, there, All 11 of the events that we've done have not been a profitable endeavor. Um, we've literally had to dip into our credit, basically. There wasn't anything. It wasn't like we actually had a pocket to dip into and put money into. We, you know, we've had to take loans and, do, and um, get a lot of credit for these events. So um, any little bit that you can help, every ticket that's sold, every little bit of a um, dollar a month in a Patreon account will help us to fund our endeavors and fund our, the programs so that we continue to do some of these other things that are free content. Um, the project management that we're doing on the clinical guidelines will really go a long way.